Welcome to Apologia and another edition of Ham and Egg News, where we react to Ken Ham reacting to things. Oh, hi, I'm Ken Ham, and I'm here with Dr. Kai Cluster and also Brian Osborne. Hey, guys. And we're going to start off by discussing a new fossil from a biblical perspective as well as other stories, but... You know what? Pause the tape. Pause the tape. All right, I'm already upset about this because Ken Ham is going to lead a scientific discussion. Ken Ham has about as much authority talking about science, evolution, everything else, as I do about thoracic surgery. This video is already starting out bad. The man runs the ARC account. If you actually believe that hundreds of thousands, not billions of animals stayed afloat on a wooden boat built by eight people, you don't get to lead a science discussion. You just, I, I already can't listen. You might get elected to Congress. You never know. With the way things are, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. I would not be shocked. <laughs> We're already having discussions about Herschel Walker and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Why not get hell? <laughs> Does dinosaur skin taste like chicken? Do you know why you ask that question? I'm not really sure, no. Because evolutionists believe dinosaurs evolved into birds. Oh, that's right. And so when you eat a chicken, you're eating dinosaur. So when you go to Chick-fil-A and eat some pre-sanctified chicken, like when right. evolutionists are eating a dinosaur. Pause the tape. Pre-sanctified chicken? I'm assuming they're saying pre-sanctified because the former owner of Chick-fil-A was anti-LGBTQ. I'm assuming that's why he said that stupid shit. I assume so. They're big fans. Okay. All right. And I'm not a scientist. I sweat for a living. But isn't there some validity to that claim that Tyrannosaurus Rex is directly related to what we call chickens today? Isn't there some link to that? Well, perhaps not T-Rex directly, but T-Rex and chicken definitely had a common ancestor. Oh, okay. Well, hell, let's roll it. Because they believe that dinosaurs grew feathers and became birds, something like that. So anyway, I don't like eating chicken. We were talking about that earlier. Unless you don't like chicken. Unless it's flavored. Do you like Chick-fil-A? Oh, yeah, but it's flavored. To... Okay. <laughs> Is this an advertisement for Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is Answers in Genesis, supposed to be talking about science, and now they're jerking off the founder of Chick-fil-A because he doesn't like gay people. So, okay. <laughs> Science. Yeah. But it's Ken Ham. So I, what, what, what else should I expect? Holy well, shit. of course, Ham doesn't like chicken. That just ah. makes sense. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> well, there's chickeny chicken. I can't eat chickeny chicken. I don't like chickeny chicken. <laughs> okay. What are we talking about? Ken is on the show less and less these days. And perhaps moments like this are why he's less and less in the public eye. The next thing they start talking about bowling balls. <laughs> I just, I already don't trust this. It is going to be a horrible take. Yeah. So there's been a really good find, a dinosaur find. It's actually a hydrosaur, a duckbill dinosaur. It's almost a complete skeleton. This is over in Canada. The skin has been preserved. So you can see the texture of the skin. Some of the tendons have been preserved also as well. Supposedly 76 million years old, but of course that's imaginary time, not now, real history. If you're going to have preserved tendons, which they say, and preserved skin, here's what happened. The dinosaur died and over millions of years was slowly covered by sediment as it rotted and decayed, and which is why everything is so preserved. That's exactly right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's kind of correct. I mean, slowly but surely, more and more layers were after the dinosaurs well, deceased. That's a common misconception, and it's a misconception oh, okay. I had when I believed everything that Ken Ham, which was only a few short years ago. But <laughs> all fossils are necessarily buried rapidly. They're okay. correct in oh. saying... It wouldn't actually work that a decaying carcass would outlast the process of, you know, a geological layer, right? So every fossil we have is because of some kind of accident or some kind of quick happenstance where an animal is buried quickly. But this is not news to scientists. And also scientists don't come to the conclusion that therefore every fossilized animal that we have was all buried at the same time. It's a misconception that they play on that people like myself will fall for. It's like, yeah, that's, that, is, that does sound dumb that the, the thing wouldn't rot. Anyway. So he, he's not having the same conversation that right. actual scientists are having. Right? Right. And, yeah, so according to Ken Ham logic, he's correct. Yeah, he's, he, if, if he's arguing against, I guess, this fucked up ass version of how fossils get laid down, then yeah, he's correct, so right? He's, he set up a straw man. Unfortunately, most Christians fall for it because we're not educated. And then yeah, he's yeah. also, he's going to successfully knock down the straw man that every scientist would be face palming right now. This ought to be fun. 
Yeah. Or so. they will make an admission themselves that says, the abundance of sandstone and silt covering the fossils is what helped with their impeccable preservation. And one of the scientists is quoted as saying, I think the specimen was covered quite quickly. There you go. The scientist is on board with covered quickly. Okay. And she's got that smart ass look on her face. All right. Therefore, the boat story, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Because yeah. <laughs> that makes lots of scientific sense. Right. These motherfuckers. All right. Here we go. But it's just a few fossils. We're talking about millions upon millions, actually billions upon billions of dead things buried in rock layers that were laid down by water all over the earth. What would do that? Maybe a great flood. Maybe a global flood Maybe back in Noah's day. Right? Okay. You know, pause the tape. This is painful. They're teaching people this stuff. Yes. Aren't they? Yes. Jesus. Many. Jesus. Age Christ. They're the top homeschool curriculum in America. We're doomed. We are doomed. This look on her face of pure satisfaction, like she just dropped the mother of all knowledge bombs. <laughs> it sounds like a flood, doesn't it? It's just, this just hurts. I don't know if you've heard me talk about this on my show before, but I was in the third grade, man, when I asked, what did Noah do with all the poop? And she just kept saying they threw it overboard. It's like, that doesn't make any sense thing was a quarter mile long so you walk that way with the elephant crap and by the time you walk back not only has that elephant taken a crap but its twin has taken another crap now think about all the other animals that you just passed up how did you have time to do i was in the third grade when i asked that question they kicked me out of <laughs> uh, sunday school and then the sunday school teacher told me i'm gonna go to hell and i'll never see my mother ever again that was just to seal in the flavor. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay, if a third grader can poke a hole in this, these are grown-ass people. And I'm not trying to bash because, hell, a decade ago, I was on this tip. But, God, this is hard to listen to. Thinking that it just 10 years ago, I was the same way. Did your Sunday school teacher also mention that in Genesis, it specifically says the ark had only one window? Oh, yeah. That's why I kept asking. <laughs> Roll it. This is fun. Maybe a global flood. Talking about Shit. fossils, we have a... The audience seems like... Are they fossilized? Today. Are they petrified? We need to wake them up. When your audience is bombing, the best thing you want to do is just bring that to everyone's <laughs> Well, maybe it would help if he got some inflection in his voice. Mm. <laughs> oh, the problem is the audience is fossilized. <laughs> Let us crack it. This is just bad all the way around. We're not all blessed with your charisma. Maybe for 10% of his yearly income, I could donate some to him. How about you that? would be able to retire, let me tell you. you that would be great. <laughs> I bet. This is fun. Let's roll it. And the more you look at the fossil record, the more you realize it speaks of catastrophism, which is consistent with the flood of Noah's day, uh, not millions and millions of years. So this fossil wasn't 65 million years old. I'd say at the most, this fossil will be about 4,300 years old. That's right. Time of the flood. Do you know why I, I said agree. that? Pause That's it. when the flood happened. Pause the day. Pause the day. Holy shit. Clearly, he's a young earth guy if he's talking about dinosaur fossils that he found that are four thousand years old i mean i do understand i'm not that removed from my belief days but i guess looking at it from this angle i guess my question is keep the jesus belief again if you actually think you need a jesus to not be an asshole then please continue to believe but what does accepting the science take away from your belief I mean, maybe with the exception of this lady right here in the middle and maybe five other PhDs, you can still have the belief, but you can just leave the science to the actual scientists. I mean, how does accepting 65 million years take away from your Jesus belief? I'm confused. Kind of. Well, there's the, the theological reasons. It sounds like Jesus believed in a young earth and probably Paul believed in a young earth. You know, so if you want to go there, these could all be interpreted in other ways, of course. But if you're empire building like Ken, of course, you need to create an us versus them. And in America, the them, the number of non-believers while growing has historically been small. And so you need to actually further divide the Christian people. If you're going to create a proper us versus them, you need to say that we are the Gnostics with the correct knowledge. And when you do that, you have an enemy that you can keep constantly bang the drum and say, well, these people who are accepting the LGBT, those are the people who are accepting science. They're creating their own drama. Can't say that for sure, but if I was wanting to create an empire based around religious beliefs, that would be a tactic I would take. Good times. 
Let's roll it. That's right. You know what's else fascinating? There's even um, in dinosaur bones, they found soft tissue that's still soft. Um, that's it's right. preserved, um, but it's still stretchy and pliable. And there's even red blood cells found in artery segments and things. No, that's just a lie. And watch all my other videos. Really? Okay. I was about to ask. When Mary Schweitzer discovered this, and I've had her on my channel, and she's a Christian, just like you said, and she believes in it older, so it's all great. They had to dissolve these bones for days in acid to get it to do any kind of stretching. No and, shit. And what they have found is the iron remains of what looks like blood cells because the iron in our blood lasts. Has anyone found any blood cells in dinosaur bones? Do we have blood cells? No, we do not have blood cells. I don't have the data to support that. And therefore you can see the shape of blood cells, but those are not blood cells. It's the iron left over. Just no like, shit. So anyway, these All are right. again, things I believe. I learned learn. something. Let's roll it. Let's roll it. Next article. A scientific journal calls for suppression of research contradicting LGBT ideology. I, re I retitled this article, The Ministry of Truth Calls for Suppression of Research Contradicting the LGBTQ Agenda, because <laughs> essentially what it is. And so this has been happening for a while, but this is a new journal that's really doing this. Pause the tape. Now I'm going to get pissed off. Okay. I understand they've got a product to sell. The LGBTQ Agenda. I, 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 you're right. They have to pull this us versus them bullshit. But they're right about everything until they open up their mouth to speak English words. There is no LGBTQ plus agenda. Everyone just wants to be equal. Everyone just wants to be accepted. And so this bullshit about the agenda, the agenda, the agenda, that wording just really bothers. And hey, I'm sure everyone in that audience, just like they fit on, because hell, I didn't know, you know, the, the whole red blood cell thing. It's just, a, it, it's a lie. And now this crap, an agenda, and I'm quite sure they'll pull out of their booty hole here soon enough that Christianity is now under attack because gay people want to be equal. So, yeah, this ought to be fun. The Nature of Human Behavior, that particular science journal, they've now had an editorial saying, listen, we now want you to be sure that any research you do, it cannot be attacking any particular group. And so what they're going to say is that your research, whether it intentionally or unintentionally harms someone, if it harms someone unintentionally, you cannot actually put it forth. In other words, there's no academic freedom when it comes to this. You know, a lot of people are shocked when they say, you mean they're really saying this? That if, if the research goes against the LGBT worldview, you're not allowed to publish it. If it goes against, uh, you know, more than two genders, you're not allowed to publish it. Okay. Yeah, that's, what, that's exactly what? what they're saying. Oh, dude, this is just ugly. This is just gross. Let me quote from the article that they're right. trying to blow from. So for those who are worried, the authors note that to walk the fine balance between academic freedom and protection of the dignity of rights of individuals and human groups, the framework will be used to judiciously consult with ethics experts and advocacy groups where such research is needed. So the policy nature is putting forth is when you're putting forth a paper that may directly or indirectly harm a group, that we are going to pass it through an extra ethics experts and advocacy groups. What is wrong with that? I would say nothing. Yeah, if your research, if your reporting has potential harm, yeah. Let's pump the brakes. Let's make sure we're putting out the right stuff. Yeah. So, so they, they will still publish it, but they say that the, such research will require an extra layer of checking. Anything but that. But if you're Ken Ham, you want to say that, yeah, all, all the gays want to not let us publish papers that say that there's only two genders. Like that's... Someone identifying as they, they'll pick the pronoun that Ken Ham does not agree with. Right. I guess my question is, how much skin is that off of his potato? If the person in Waco, Texas identified they were assigned, let's say, female at first. They don't identify as female, so they want to use the pronoun they and them. Bam. What does that take away from Ken Ham? Let me answer your question with a question. Try me. If you are Ken Ham and your $100 million a year ministry is being hurt because of COVID and people can't come to see your ARC Park in your creation museum anymore, right. and you are struggling to get donations, what is bound to get people rallied to your cause more? The fact that some scientists think that a fossil was formed over millions of years, is that going to get your blood boiling to donate? Or if you insinuate that the gays are coming to your school to convert your children to be transgender. Option B. Mm. Option B. So There's he's stoking the fires. If you watch over the last couple of years, he's pivoted almost entirely from this young earth creation as the front and center to social fear as his front and center. 
And I can't help but think that perhaps that is related to what best stokes the fires. Makes sense. I, I mean, say, I could be I, I could be wrong, and Robert, I trust I you think to tell you're me if I was right. To be honest, what is it that gets people into voting booth in America? God, gays, guns. So yeah, that, I think you know. Me, to be honest with you, all right. Here well, we go. I'm, <laughs> broken clock is right every once in a while. Do you realize that <laughs> uh, journals for years, secular journals, have been basically had the policy: if there's an article that supports creation, they won't publish yeah, it. Yeah, uh, what seems to be the problem? If you believe that the earth is 6,000 years old, if you believe there's a white guy in the sky that literally talks donkeys and horses and fish, fine. Scientifically, there's no foundation to back that. But teach that shit in your church and your Christian school. Now, I mean, this is pot calling the kettle black. You also called it, this is his appeal to persecution, right? It's like, well, they're letting the uh, leftists publish papers, but they won't let we creationists publish papers, you know? They're creating their own victim status, even though they're the ones still in control around (laughs) here. So, yay. For a few more years. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. (laughs) They have been uh, actually eliminating any creationist worldview from these journals for a long time. That's the bias that's out there. And now you're seeing being applied to the LGBT worldview. They will not allow any research to be published that goes against that. Close the tape. All right. So the wording, the wording, the creationist worldview. Fine. It's, it's a worldview, but it's also sitting on some bullshit. Creationism is not science. It's just not. Now, again, there, there, there's nothing that backs up 6,000 year old earth. <laughs> but then he's punching himself in the face and then showing the bruises off saying, I just got my ass kicked by the gays. They're not pulling away from creationism and giving those special rights to the gays, as he would call them. There's no science to back up creationism. We know that gay is real, trans is real, sexual fluidity and gender identity. We know this is real. So we're going to pay attention to the stuff that is real. You, you can't publish it in there, but in one case they found evidence. They had been saying that... Um, that using uh, puberty blockers produced better mental health outcomes. But then when they found out that was debunked, that that was not actually true, they were slow in withdrawing it because it was getting good publish, good, good coverage. Um, and so they're not playing it both. Okay. Slow is an entirely arbitrary word, but they did retract it. Like if there was an article that made false claims, if the methodology was a problem or whatever, it was retracted. Whether or not it was slow or not makes no difference. The point is right. that science corrects itself. And religion never corrects. Itself. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, God. This is, this is taking <laughs> years off my life. <laughs> that's, that's where we're at. You, you can't trust all that you're reading in, in the news articles or even in the scientific journals these days. Increasingly, you can't trust a lot of what you read. Do you trust anything you read anywhere, Robert? No. I'm no. a skeptical bastard. Yeah. And I'm a curious bastard. So if Article A says something, I'm going to look for Article B. To see if Article A is kicking it straight. That's why I got kicked out of Sunday school, because I wouldn't stop asking questions. Exactly. And especially if Article A agrees with you. That's the time you should most check it out. Absolutely. Okay. You say that? I responded to a tweet, and it was, what do you want put on your headstone? And my answer was, here lies the biggest hypocrite. Mm. In other words, if your mind isn't being constantly changed, you're sitting in a tunnel. I mean, 10 years ago, I believed in God. 10 years ago, I believed gay people were just at their foundation. Terrible. Because that's what some dude who sat on a pul- pulpit told pulpit, whatever the fuck. Yeah. That, yeah, thank you. That's what he told me. Now look at me. <laughs> right? I mean, just, I just think <laughs> about who I was just 15 years ago. Not only do I not recognize that dude, I don't like him. So if you aren't constantly taking in new information, you're doing it wrong. But again, it's Ken Ham. He <laughs> accidentally this, this gave good advice. Push. No. You know, and you were talking about the blocking pro- right. um, professionals from publishing articles on creation type work in the science field. Um, in about 2008, oh, Ben God. Stein produced mm-hmm. a documentary called Expelled. I don't know if any of you remember that. Ben Stein. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus H. Christ. I did a snippet on Daily Disciple a couple of days ago where he quoted Ray Comfort. Except he quoted Ray Comfort as an authority. Oh, no. I'm like, dude, dude, I can't take you seriously now. If you saw Expelled and now you're quoting that as some sort of an authority, I can't listen to what you say now. Right? It's like, 
You know, today we're going to have a talk on racial tolerance. Today's guest speakers are David Duke, Jeff Sessions, <laughs> the Grand Wizards <laughs> of the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, they're, it's like, well, you're already sitting on some bullshit. I can't hear you. I saw snippets of Expelled. I just, I can't take you seriously now. I just, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Unless anyone is thinking that we're just being incredulous here. I mean, go look up Expelled Debunked. People have gone <laughs> through every single story in Expelled. And oh, yeah. these are people who were dismissed for very sketchy stuff, who later came back and just told this actor, yeah, I was fired because of my Christian beliefs. And then he just right. accepted that on face value and made it a documentary. Expelled gave us, what was it? That quote where Richard Dawkins talked about the possibilities that aliens. Yeah. And designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. My conflict is atheist Robert is still looking at Christian Robert. And so 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I would have bit on every single syllable. I've heard so many Christians just take that ball and just run with it. And again, it's like when you're quoting Ben Stein, I just have a hard time listening to you and taking you seriously. <laughs> The journals have been doing this kind of for a long time. Um, and so maybe some people are being dissuaded from pursuing that kind of research because they know it's going to be hard to publish. By this, by this, they mean passing ethics committees. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, they've required ethics committees for a while. Like, that's a big problem. That's terrible. But now the fact is that this is in place. Um, they can not only not get published, they can actually be accused of a violent academic attack on a minority group. And there can be repercussions. Who is this person in the middle again? I think they said she was an academic. Oh, sorry. It, yes, it's Dr. Kaya Kloster. Okay. So I put her in the same category. The NFL is different, but college, not so much. We all got the same full ride scholarship, but not all college athletes are created equal. One of the best players I ever played with was Tony Bracken. I played opposite of him. His only mission in life was to end the lives of the opposing quarterback. 6'6", 270, 5% body fat on a super morbidly obese day. He was just as much of a college football player, I won't say his name, as John Jones over here. John Jones got cut from our football team. We didn't know that was possible. You can lose your scholarship based on performance. My point is, Tony was just as much of a college athlete as this dude over here. Okay, she earned a PhD. She's this dude. She's the college football player who's getting ready to get cut. Mm. Because something tells me she, there's no way she is as respected as probably 90 some odd percent of credentialed scientists. She may have the title, but there's no way she's as good. Because if you were <laughs> sitting next to Ken Ham and you're agreeing with what it is he has to say, I've got issues with you. You're judged by the company you keep. If this research leads to any undermining of the LGBT worldview, then you're going to have a discussion about, you know, whether we should or shouldn't publish it. And if it's going to undermine them in any way, we shouldn't publish it. No, you said it yourself, Ken. It's not that they won't publish it. They have a discussion first about whether they should. Exactly. Exactly. But again, what I know the answer. So I know this is a rhetorical question. What does Ken have Lou? Gay people being happy because they're equal. Trans people aren't being dehumanized. That makes them happy. Okay, again, how does that take away from Kent Hale? Again, I know the answer, but it's just... <sighs> and it's not limited to LGBTQ no. in other episodes. They feel the same way about critical race theory, right? They make the same objection, those kind of things. So it's very broad. If we can find a video on CRT... One, we need to dissect it. Two, I will have a stroke. <laughs> okay, well, they're not teaching critical race theory to fifth graders. They're not. It, how many times must this be said? This is a graduate level course. Now, if you're talking about what's going on in elementary schools and junior highs and high school, they're teaching the truth now. Because when I was a kid, slaves... We were in Africa, turned us into slaves. Some guy named Martin came around. Now everything is equal. Now I know two people here in Austin where they sent out notices. And I'm starting to get chills now. Mm -hmm. They sent out notices saying we are no longer going to teach elementary school kids about the first Thanksgiving. 
We're going to teach the truth. This was a slaughter. Mm. The pilgrims were yesteryear's Westboro Baptists. They didn't leave looking for religious freedom. They got their monkey ass kicked out. They came to the Americas. They spread disease. They raped. They murdered. And what they could not do physically, they did through chemical warfare by giving the natives viruses that their immunity didn't have defense for. So we're going to start teaching the truth. I know two people who pulled their kids out of school, no. put them into a Christian private school so that they can learn that people in brown suits and black hats had turkey dressing and popcorn and made friends with the natives. I, again, it's a rhetorical question, but what do you lose by learning the truth? So, I mean, if he's going to sit here and do a double leg takedown on CRT, I think I want to see him do it. Nobody I need else? to have a heart attack before the end of this year. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to save that for another day. We're, we're, okay. <laughs> but it exists. So. Thank you. Congress has already passed a bill mm -hmm. um, that is redefining marriage for the first time in American history. Uh, the current administration are really pushing for this. In fact, uh, Chuck Schumer actually made the statement he wants to tie it to a funding bill to get it through, to redefine marriage. What was the date? What? Okay, fine. And again, I think that's a loaded term, redefining marriage. But how does that take away from Ken Ham's marriage? Every right. Christian who believes that only men can have sex with women, you can still do that. There, there's nothing in the rule book that says because John and John and Susie and Susie got married, that some way, somehow, that takes away from what you've got. And if your marriage is hanging on by such a small thread, your marriage was doomed anyway. If the quote-unquote redefining of marriage fucks your shit up, your marriage was going to end. Give me a break. The like, very second that Congress passes a bill that says Mr. and Mrs. Ham can't be married anymore, you and I will both be marching against that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Ken Ham is allowed to have sex with one woman for the rest of his life because that's what makes him happy. I severely doubt it. But if someone else's happiness takes away from yours, then you didn't possess real happiness. I agree. That's just it. These motherfuckers. Jesus Christ. In other words, if someone like you in the audience said to somebody you don't believe in the LGBT worldview and the Bible is true and marriage is only one man and one woman, they could then sue you. For that they could shut down Christian organizations or they could get our tax exempt status taken away from us. That's what they're trying to move towards in this nation. Pause the tape. Pause the tape. Give me a break. When you start, you know, endorsing candidates, you're now into politics. So, no, you should not have tax exempt status. Jesus certainly did not say, you know, on this tax exempt status, I will build my church. Build my like, church. If you can't adhere to what the government will allow you to be tax exempt for, Put your money where your mouth is and accept that you're not tax exempt anymore. What they call persecution is what everyone else calls following the damn rules. <laughs> There's a line that none of us are allowed to cross. This motherfucker. They need a plot for God's Not Dead 6. So. And I will do a movie review on that too. <laughs> My question is why should we follow an ethics framework at all? Whose ethics are we following in this? Right? <laughs> and so, what they're actually wanting us to do is follow their definition of morality, their definition of sexuality and marriage, their definition of gender. No, what was the date? What? No, 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 no. We're not having the same conversation. Like you said, when they come up with a rule that says Mr. and Mrs. Ken Ham can no longer be married or have sex, you're right. I'll be the first one to march. I don't like his wording at all. No one's forcing anyone to do shit. I personally think the Christian message is harmful, but that's just me. And in my house, I make the fucking rules. So if you want to come in this house and say, I'm a guilty sinner, I deserve to be tortured, I'm going to put your ass on the other side of that door. It's just really that simple. In your church, you can say all that stuff and you can do the hallelujahs and the amens. The rule that says gay people can get married, serve in the military, do everything that straight people can do does not negatively affect these cats at all. And so I, I don't like their wording. They're, no one's being forced to follow an agenda. They're just not. They're, they're, they're making the rules equal for everyone. But they're going to take it as a personal attack because they have to. I'm catching a whiff of Frank Turek. What do they base their morality on anyway? I, I, I think that's coming up. You know, you got, you got to warn me before you bring up Frank Turek. It almost stood <laughs> up my computer. If they go down the road of whose morality, I'm <laughs> going to start crying. 
Let's see it. Well, that's too much work to make your cartoon cry, so just try to hold it in. (laughs) They want to redefine morality within their own worldview. And so it's this fundamental shift away from a biblical foundational ideology of these realities to a secular one, which ironically, though, in their worldview, they've got no real foundation for absolute truth. Bing, 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 bing. (laughs) They did it, didn't they? You're right. They're going down the road of Frank Turek, which is already sitting on some bullshit. Thank it's a God. shortcut for saying, if you start thinking that these secular people are making sense, don't forget that, you know, they can't make sense. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Well, here's the interesting thing. When you have the foundation, it's man that determines truth. You've got no foundation in absolutes. You don't. Then anything goes. Yep. But actually, anything doesn't go. Well, it's a date. Well, it's a date. But everything does go. Bad shit happens, whether your God exists or not. Just based on what I do for a living. Bad shit happens all the fucking time. Remind people what you do for a living, because I'm not everyone. I'm a self-defense teacher, and I would never in a million years sit down. And after Susie Q over here has sat here and told me about the worst moment of her life, I would never. Oh, wait, hold on, Susie. Wait, hold on, hold on. And I'm quoting a Christian apologist who is also a self-defense teacher. So these are not my words. Well, I know what happened to you was uncomfortable you may not have liked that but if there is no god why is what happened to you objectively wrong oh my god i bullshit you not oh jeff durbin this dude is legit black belt and combat style taekwondo i've seen his self-defense classes online and i've heard him not to the people in this class but when he's making an argument as an apologist well the rape was uncomfortable you may not have liked it But if there is no God, is it objectively wrong? And I'm going to tell you something. Never in the history of self-defense has that line ever given anyone an ounce of fucking comfort. So whether their God exists or not is irrelevant to the fact that that bullshit actually happened. So when I hear Christians talk about absolute this and objective, it pisses me the fuck off because you're not helping. People steal, people rape, people murder when it comes to what they're talking about. Well, whose truth are we talking about? We're talking about that trans person's truth. And that trans person's truth is what makes them happy. And I've heard it. I'm sure you've heard it. Where a trans person, like, if I had to live another moment as my assigned gender, let's just say I wouldn't be here. And so it's like, okay, so living their truth helped them go from Monday to Tuesday and made them happy. Who gives a fuck if it's objectively true it literally saved that person's life this is some intellectually and emotionally lethal bullshit you can sit here and talk about how objective it is and how absolute it is you get to claim victory while those people over there suffer i just i don't like i i don't like in other words if there is no god who is the absolute authority how do you find to find good how do you define what's right and what's wrong you can't please i define what's good you define what's good. Ken Ham gets to define what's good. And you know what? He's absolutely right. We may disagree. Welcome to this thing called the real world. Ken Ham doesn't believe that gay people should be married. Okay. Just like Whoopi Goldberg says, then don't marry a gay person. But those gay people over there should be married. So, I mean, he's just talking some shit. Jesus. So I define good as the thing that reduces harm and increases prosperity. Ken Ham defines good as whatever my old book says. <laughs> Whose exactly. view is going to better reduce harm and increase flourishing? Exactly. It used to be and should be that um, research is judged on its merits of the quality of the research done, not deciding what should be published, published based on what the results say. Um, and that's what, so what are we going to be um, suppressing? What, what new information is not going to make it out into the public because they're Quieting. Which makes me laugh because Answers in Genesis has their own peer review research journal called the Answers Journal, which states up front that your conclusion must be young earth creationism or we will not publish it. Are you really, serious? You yeah, are serious. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, you can't be a janitor at the Ark Encounter and believe in an old earth. If you're washing dishes, you have to sign a statement of faith saying you affirm everything that Kent teaches. So, yeah. Totally not a cult, right? Right. Not a cult. No.
Jesus H. Christ. Now the title says this, I love my school, but I'm here today because I would not call a boy a girl. Teacher refused to use students' gender neutral pronouns, condemns insanity as he is jailed in Ireland. There's Ireland right there. He didn't use the words the student and the student's parents asked him to use. He didn't use they instead of the actual personal pronoun. And so since he refused to do that, the school suspended him to where he could not come on the property, but yet he refused to stay away. And there was actually a court rule that saying he could not come to the school and be there, but he actually violated that and came to the school anyway. So the headline should have read, suspended teacher refuses to leave campus. Let me make sure I got this story straight. The teacher refused to use the correct pronoun. I'm yes. assuming there was probably a policy in place. Yes. Okay. So he violated the policy. Right. And was suspended for breaking the rules. Yes. Told to leave the campus. Yes. Refused. Correct. So now he's trespassed. Correct. Okay. Like I so, said earlier. <laughs> well, just, well, Christians need to understand there are these things called rules and consequences. Right. It's the same thing that we all have to follow. This isn't persecution. If I go 55 and a 25, I don't get to say you're pulling me over because I'm black. You're pulling me over because I broke the damn rules. Exactly. And now I'm going to pay the consequences. If there's a policy in place that says we are going to respect pronouns, I understand he's got a Bible. Can't have taught him that you can't say that. Okay, fine. Go to Christian school where you can flex those muscles. But if you are in a public school and they say, here's our policy, Christians, if you break that policy, just like working at the damn creation yep. place. If you fuck around and say dinosaurs Literally, died, if you have sex, you can get fired. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so just like working at Ken Ham's boat, yep. I would not qualify. If you fuck around and say the dinosaurs were killed off 65 million years ago, you lose your job. Right. And yes. if that employee stayed and refused to leave the Ark Encounter, Ken Ham would be in his rights to say, I fired this employee. Please have the police remove 100%. this person. 100%. The headline 100%. would not say, because I think dinosaurs died 65 million years ago, I was arrested. <laughs> it's almost funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the, the same rules that he would want for himself, he won't extend that courtesy to others. But it's getting hell. Jesus. You could have great people, highly qualified, uh, great researchers or great uh, teachers or whatever, but if you won't call a boy a girl, then... You're, you're in trouble. If you won't bow the knee to the secular authoritarians and you don't get to play ball, whatever field you want to be in. Mm -hmm. In other right, words, Christians don't have freedom for their worldview. No, they really don't. And he actually says that. He says, this is insanity as he left the courtroom to be taken to jail. But he said, I will not give up my Christian beliefs. So it was his Christian ideology, his Christian worldview that would not allow him. But again, that's just factually not true. Christians, you are allowed to have your worldview. I don't know if you noticed this, but you guys run this joint. You just do. You are absolutely allowed to believe that the person who was assigned male at birth will always be a male. Fine. That's your belief. But you are now in the public square and the public square just said, you're going to respect this kid's pronouns. We're going to help this child be healthy and be happy. So we're going to respect that child's pronoun. Where my God says that you can get the fuck out you can take your God with you. Go to a Christian school where you can sit here and terrorize children. You can do that over there. But Absolutely. the rules state if you teach in that public facility, you are going to respect pronouns. Debate whether this was a good policy or a bad policy, that's fine. But it was the policy. If you work somewhere where they make you wear a red hat, that might be stupid, but they can fire you for wearing a red hat. That's just the way life goes. You're not being persecuted. No one said you had to give up your Christian worldview. You can do whatever you want to do. But when you are in public, you now have to follow the same rules that we all follow. Yep. <laughs> that school had rules and that dude broke them. You're, you're, they're going to, there are consequences for that. These motherfuckers. And the same sort of thing is happening in other areas too. Medical professionals yep. told they have to perform abortions That's right. or they have to form, perform uh, the, what I would call mutilation uh, in regard to Gender sex issues. change mm -hmm. operations. You know what? Pause the tape. Pause the tape. So again, the wording here is important. I'm sure under some perverse definition, yeah, you can call gender reassignment surgery genital mutilation. But why stop there? Let's call breast augmentation we're going to cut your tits open and shove plastic bags 
of foreign substance in there. We can say rhinoplasty. I'm either going to reshape your nose or I'm literally going to take a hammer and I'm going to fucking break it. The wording is important here. When you're stoking fires like these guys are, that wording means something. And it means something negative. Like they're just taking a hatchet to someone's groin or something and just fucking these people up when that's not the case at all. So, I mean, this is, this is hate right here. And of course, it goes back to voluntary employments. Like if the terms of your employments are that you work for an abortion provider, yeah, you're going to have to do abortion. So if you don't want to do that, maybe don't work for an abortion provider. Exactly. It's interesting how even some of the the clergy and churches are saying, well, the culture's changed, so we need to change uh, what we believe. But wait a minute, the Bible never changes. That's right. right? Well, take, and there's a problem. There's a problem. Like I said, I want to be known as the world's biggest hypocrite. I want to take a new information and change. He's right. The Bible never changed. That's the problem. That thing was written centuries, millennia ago. If you have a job that requires a certification or license of any kind, there's continuing education. You got to renew your driver's license. You have to prove that you are up to date on the current information. This is why people like this, formerly me, used to go around and think a virgin got pregnant. Well, now we take a new information and we now know some way, somehow, sperm has to meet a, that's it. That's the bottom line. So he's right. The Bible never changes, and that's its problem. That's the problem. In, in a way, what's happening in our culture, the division between light and darkness, the division between real Christians okay, and those that aren't. This motherfucker. Okay, these words, light and dark and all this other crap, I mean, Christians versus real Christians. I, I don't like anyone on this panel. I just, I just don't. This is it's like, holy shit. I, I can't believe I used to fight it and believe this garbage, but this is, they they haven't called anyone a name. There have been no slurs, but this to me is hate. This is just hate. And, and they said earlier that, you know, they don't dislike anyone. It's like, but yeah, you do. Because this is all standing in the way of other people's happiness. That's got nothing to do with them. Gay people being happy will actually only positively affect them. Black people voting. Women getting equal pay for equal work. Everybody wins in the long run. There's no negative to this. But again, they've got a book that never changes. So Ken Hale. Gee. Do we have faith like people right. like that? Think about that. And that, that leads in well to the next article too, doesn't it? It does. So this one is actually a bit of good news. So it's nice to get some good news every now and again. Oh, God, there's more of this crap. <laughs> we can be done. We can be done. <laughs> that was plenty of coverage. Plenty. We are, but they're kicking themselves in between the legs and then claiming everyone else is beating them up, right? It's like, well, we're not at that stage yet where we're going to be fed to the lions. And like, he's in Kentucky, which the last time I checked is one, the United States and two, still the Bible Belt. And so again, all this make believe persecution and all this other crap, I'm almost glad that people like this are actual Christians because if they had to walk five seconds in an actual persecuted class of shoes, they wouldn't last. They wouldn't last. Sitting here talking about how hard it is to be a Christian, feeding to the lion, we won't bow down to the secular world. They're still the ruling class. So this was just bellyache. This is just bellyache. Jesus. Thank you so much for coming on. What's the flavor of your channel? If someone goes over there and watches a video, what should they expect to see? Well, it, if you were going to click on Gin and Truth on YouTube, first and foremost, thank you. Secondly, buckle up. I, I tend to talk the same way my father does, and that is I just call a spade a spade. The way things T.I. is. If your breast smells like ass, I'm going to be the first one to tell you. I don't attack. I normally don't attack the person, but I do attack a belief. When I talk about Christianity, it's the ruling class. It's been much shoved in our face. So I do go after and I try to make the distinction between Christians and their belief. But hey, I just don't hold back. I've got 39 years worth of stuff to get out. So if you're going to log on my channel, thank you very much to buckle up. This was fun. Thank you so much. Because again, when I dumped the whole faith thing, I watched your videos. I, I watched all these other people's videos. And now I get a chance to talk to y'all. And thank you so much. Y'all were big influences.
and you, you help a guy. So I, I actually I, want to say thank you. I, I, I watched your stuff. I really I did. I appreciate that greatly. That means a lot to me. That's exactly why I do it. So I appreciate that. Um, it worked. All right, my man. Peace.